announcements today. Uh, Vacation Bible School will be starting next week. So please note the uh, time and events for that. It starts next Monday from 5 o'clock to 7. So please take note of that. And then following Vacation Bible School on Sunday, August the 18th, there will be a special service. The Vacation Bible School children will be part of our service. There will be music provided by the Dukes of Uke, the dedication of the Columbarium, followed by a hot dog pie, ice cream, and root beer uh, float social. So uh, keep that in mind. We have many who have signed up for Vacation Bible School, for which we are grateful. Uh, still in need of a few folks to, to bring some pies as we celebrate the summer. Also keep in mind that uh, we still have sign-ups for lawn mowing. New members will be received into the life of the congregation um, this month. And then uh, remember the online giving uh, option, which is available. School's right around the corner. Keep that in mind. And our church council will be meeting on August 21st at 6.30 p.m. I believe our social gathering is going to start in, again in September, is what I was told. So will they be gathering for our social gathering that we do once a month? They're go uh, going to have that again in September. Uh, it will be on Tuesday in, in September, that is correct. Not, not this Tuesday. Yeah, not this Tuesday is what I was told. So it'll be in uh, September. And we'll put an announcement in the bulletin. And then uh, Pam got in touch with me. Um, uh, David Skulls, who um, does the taping for our service. He is from South Africa, and his mother passed away. In her sleep, she was 51 years old. So we want to remember this family uh, very much in our prayers. And at this time, I'd like to call on Sherry. Or Barb. I'm calling on Barb. Um, Pam, um, you probably remember Pam lost a friend. And, because, and I had the privilege of meeting her. Uh, so they have a, the second annual Dollars for Deb event, which will be held on August the 24th. And please excuse me if I pronounce Geisenbrau, the brewery in New Prague. Does everybody know about where that is? Um, at the, the monies that is earned at this event to cancer research and local families in the financial need will be recipients of that due to the medical reasons. Last year, the monies given out <clears throat> totaled to 124,500. Of those dollars, for Deb gave our church 7,500 and we distributed to families. So it's really um, the good and the bad of something when somebody passes away and then all the goodness that comes out of it that uh, his, her family is uh, setting up for other people. So it's kind of cool. And this year, we would like to contribute, since they were so generous to our church, um, we'd like to gen donate 20 of our wonderful new cookbooks that are coming out. Right, Sh Sherry? Mm -hmm. And so these will be sold at the event to pay um, and to pay for our ladies group for these cookbooks. We would like to give a donation of $400 to them. So if you would like to contribute, please leave a donation in the basket that Pam set outside here, and that money will go to pay for the cookbooks um, to help our church also. So anyway, also if you wish to contribute in the silent auction, items like canned goods, bake, the bake sale will be there. Please bring it to church by August the 18th. So thank you very much, and go to the brewery on the 24th, and also contribute and have fun and have fun. Thank you, Barb. Do we have any other announcements? Yes, Jake. Just a reminder that we do have the lottery for the columbarium coming uh, next Sunday. Um, if you are interested in that, purchasing a niche, um, the lottery will be held outside here at the columbarium right after church. So if you meet out there, uh, Pam and the group will uh, get you all set up for that. And if it happens that you're still interested but can't come to the lottery next Sunday, 
uh, just reach out to Pam or the cemetery board and they'll help you. Um, and then also after church next Sunday, um, we have an event happening at the fellowship hall that starts at 11 a.m. Uh, so once again, to ask you all kindly to leave right after church to give them a chance to get that all going. Thank you. Do we have any other announcements? With no further announcements, let us continue our service with the confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We join in singing our opening hymn, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine, hymn number 774. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. 
invite you to be seated and welcome the children of any age to come down for the children's message. The kids want to come on down. Okay, do you see what I've brought today? Yes. What, is that a piece, slice of bread? Okay, I bet, um, now you have school lunches, don't you? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, okay. But sometimes in our lives, we, um, we uh, have sandwiches, right? What else do we do with bread? Mm, have, toast. have toast, you have like eggs and toast in the morning? Okay, and sandwiches. Um, this is wheat bread. Is anybody up here gluten-free? No? Good. Okay, you want to taste it? It's actually pretty good bread. Here you go. You're good? <laughs> gonna gonna pass on my, my whole grain wheat bread? He doesn't like bread? Okay. Well, out in our fields, we have different crops that are growing. We have um, soybeans, we have corn, we have wheat, um, and all of this is used and um, it is made into various products that we eat day by day. Now, have you ever gone without eating? Once a long time. At grandma's this year? Alma. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. How was it? Were you hungry? Did your tummy growl? No, it didn't growl. You were, oh, he was not hungry that day. So grandma probably provided and he was not hungry that day. And oh, oh. Okay, well, it's important to feed our bodies. Food is like fuel. It's like, um, you know, we put gas in a car to make it run. We put um, fuel in the combines to make them work. And it's, it gives our body strength and it gives our body energy. And this piece of bread actually can give you quite a bit of energy. We're all needing what they call carbohydrates. And with this, Jesus makes a comparison, okay? He says, I am the bread of life, okay? It's not the physical bread that we eat, though we will be having communion, and when we have communion, we receive the body of Christ, but he gives to us the life within us, okay? He gives to us the purpose and meaning of life within us. So I want you to remember the title that Jesus used for himself. He said, I am the bread of life. Just like we have basic bread that we need for life, so too Jesus comes into our life to give us all that we need. And this came after Jesus fed 5,000 people. And I'm going to give this to you today. Um, you got this once before. This is a Sunday morning miracle activity book. But we learned last week, and we continue on this, this theme of the bread of life for a couple Sundays. And Jesus fed 5,000 people, and that would be a crowd enough to fill 25 movie theaters, if you've ever gone to a movie. And he took care of each and every person. And Jesus promises to provide for us in the big miracles of life and in the little miracles of life. And on the other side of this is the opportunity to figure out some words in a special saying that Jesus has. But I'm going to pass one of these activity books out to you that you can take and work on. Yes, it's a Sunday morning book for you. And this is actually on page 10 of your book, but some other um, opportunities for you also. But if you would stand, we're going to join together, and will you pray with me? 
Okay, we're going to pray together. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you for the many ways that you speak to us and that you tell us today that you are the bread of life, that you are that which sustains us in life. We pray that you, we will recognize both the big and little miracles that you bring to us every day and be with each one of our young people as we prepare uh, not only for vacation Bible school but also for the upcoming school year. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we join in singing our next hymn. The first reading today is found in Exodus chapter 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only he had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Holy wisdom, holy word. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. Raining down manna upon them to eat and giving them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. The Lord caused the east wind to blow in the heaven and powerfully let out the south wind. Raining down flesh upon them like dust, and flying birds like the sand of the seas. Letting them fall in the midst of the camp, and, and around about the dwellings. So the people ate, and they were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. The 
second reading is found in Ephesians chapter 4. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you have called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity in itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until all of us came to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to, to maturity, to the measure of the full statute of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Invite you to stand. Our Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter, beginning with verse 24. Glory to you, O Lord. And I invite you to take your bulletin as we read our Gospel lesson together this morning. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they went, What sign are you going to give us then? so that we may see it and believe you. What work are you performing? Our fathers manner in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, O Christ. Invite you to be seated. Grace to you and peace from the God who loves. Amen. One of my favorite things to do is to bike ride. I like to road bike. Um, I took up mountain biking after several falls and decided to take more of the beginner trail, which I have enjoyed very much. But sometimes when I bike, I think about life, and I think, you know, life is truly a ride. It's a journey, isn't it? And we get ourselves strapped in and in many respects, no one can stop us. And we move from being a child to a youth to an adulthood to maturity. And uh, sometimes we hang on to the bar in the front. Sometimes we turn on the brakes. Sometimes we fall off the bike. But it's very much a journey to an end. And one of the most important things in life is to enjoy the journey. It's, you know, we talk a lot about the destination, but to enjoy the journey. Jesus had just finished feeding the 5,000, and they were part of a frenzy. In fact, they wanted to make him king. So Jesus decided to go to the other side of the lake towards Capernaum. Well, they followed him to go to the other side of the lake. And you have to ask yourself the question, why in the world did they do that? Well, likely many had been healed, and we all, when we are ill, pray for healing. They had just been fed. Most of them worked really hard in order to put food on the table. And they were on the run to see more signs and to see more miracles. But what this text does for us is it points us centrally to Jesus, who is the bread of life, that we think first, before we bring our needs, of the awesome majesty of God. And that's what worship is about. Worship is about reflecting on the awesomeness of who God is, God who created this world. God who made the mountains and the rivers, our fields and galaxies, who thought it was so important that he created each one of us and put us in this place and this time for purpose and for meaning. Many years ago, I attended a church, um, and the pastor there was Jack Hayford, and he wrote the song Majesty. I don't know. If you've ever sung it, it's a beautiful song. It talks about the majesty of God. And he wrote it after he saw the birthplace of where Churchill was born. And the birthplace was absolutely magnificent. There were very many gardens. There were tall trees. And he said to himself, you know, if you grew up in a place like this, you really would think you were a person of destiny and you were significant. And that's the very thing that we need to think about is the majesty and the dignity of Christ. That God is so great that he has placed within himself his own being, which gives to us purpose and meaning in life. Now today, and my daughter is 29, and she has a wide variety of friends very much wide variety, more than her mother could ever imagine. And it's interesting because I get the opportunity to meet these young people, and uh, sometimes they have dinner at my place, or sometimes we go on a bike ride together, or sometimes we go for a walk. But they're all searching for meaning and purpose in many ways. One is a Buddhist. They said, you know, I thought about this Christian thing, but I think I can learn more about who I am as a person by being a Buddhist. 
Another one said, you know, I don't know about the church. Sometimes I think the folks are a bunch of hypocrites. I see them on Sunday morning and I see them during the week and I think, oh, hasn't made a difference in life really. So I decided to go on my own way. And it's interesting because it's only in Christianity that God comes down, okay? In every other religion of the world, you work your way up to God, and it's only in Christianity that God comes down. And he comes to place himself within us, the Holy Spirit within us. And in the Lutheran Church, we believe in baptism, that God's Spirit lives within us, and that Spirit gives us meaning and purpose in daily life. It's important because one of them said to me, you know, Janet, I get up in the morning, I get dressed, I brush my teeth, I go to work, I come home, I maybe exercise or go for a walk, brush my teeth again, wash my face, I go to bed, and I do it all over again. I do it over and over and over. And she says, is this what adulthood is all about? Is this what I've been waiting for all the years of my life? It reminds me of what a Jewish rabbi shared with me, and they've got some wonderful ways of talking about life. He said that back in Jewish days, they used to take donkeys, and these donkeys would help uh, to generate power. And so instead of, you know, we found now that waterfalls and rivers generate power, well, they used donkeys. And they had them go around in a circle to generate power. In order to do that, they had to put blinders in front of their eyes. So here you have these donkeys going around and around all day in a circle, and they were perfectly fine with the blinders on. But the rabbi said, as soon as we took the blinders off, they were done. Even the donkeys knew it was stupid to walk around in a circle over and over and over again. It's like a good friend of mine who said, I feel like I'm on a hamster wheel and I'm never going to get off. I just go and go and go and go and go. But you know, God has more for our lives than just real busyness. He comes that we not only worship him and worship to see the awesomeness of who God is, but that we find meaning in our lives. And the people in our text found the right person, Jesus, but they thought of it in kind of a different way. They had kind of lost their way in the sense that Jesus would supply their everyday need, but he had much more to give. That was just the beginning of the story. And we often can lose our way when we fail to see, especially in the scripture where it says over and over again, take delight in the Lord, worship the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Take delight in him, worship him, and as you worship him, he will give you the wanting for the things that are in the path to provide purpose and meaning. Some years ago, I took a flight to Houston, Texas, when my husband was going to be having surgery down there, and I still remember the whole event. He had some medical equipment that he had to take with him, and of course, they made the big announcement that you had to change your gate, you know. The plane was going, they were going to put us all on a different plane. So we all scuttle up, and we get our belongings, and we go to a second gate. We walk over to the second gate, and he said, well, this plane has, medical, has um, mechanical problems too, so you all need to pick up your things and go to the third gate. So we all made a run for it to the third gate. Okay. Getting ready to board, thinks that this is actually going to go down. We're actually going to get on this plane. And... The lady at the counter says, we apologize for the inconvenience on this last minute gate change. However, this flight is going to Washington, D.C. So if you're going to Washington, D.C., get ready to board. There will be another gate change for Houston. 
and I'll never forget it because a very red-faced pilot came off that plane, looked at all of us and said, sorry, I'm on the wrong plane. I'm your Houston pilot. <laughs> and so we, we all followed him down to the right gate. This is gate number four, remember, to hopefully get on that plane, and we did get to Houston. But isn't that like how life is, you know? You start going on the journey, like I talked about how life is like a bike ride, and you kind of need to always refocus, always to rethink, am I headed in the right direction? We come to worship the Almighty God. We come to find purpose and meaning in life. But we come to the central focus of this text where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. The bread of God who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. What did the people say? Sir, give us this bread. And Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Who come, whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. It's an amazing thought, isn't it? We had a children's sermon about bread. We get hungry. We get thirsty. But Jesus says, I come and I will meet a deeper need for you. I will come and give to you that meaning that you are looking for. It reminded me of what took place as I was um, in a group of people. You know, pastors are interesting people when they get together for meetings. It's really hard to get them to gather in time. And then it's hard to get them to focus. And even pastors wander off. And we had a fellow who was speaking at a conference. Kind of dreary, you know. But that's okay. We paid attention. But there was one fellow who had a little bit of an uh, earplug in his ear. Do you know what he was doing? He was listening to a comedian. And he had a wonderful time in that whole scenario. So what voice are we listening to? Are we listening to the voice of the world? Or are we listening to the voice of Christ. Today we're going to be singing a number of hymns that talk about Jesus, who is the bread of life. And we are reminded of the significance of who God is. I'd like to close with this illustration. We are in an election year. It's going to be quite a wild ride. It's going to be interesting. Uh, the Democrats are going to be choosing their vice president this coming week. And we all have to hang on and see how it's going to go. But they always use, whenever the president comes into a formal occasion, hail to the chief. They always play that. Do you know the history behind that? That tradition developed when the 11th president, James Polk, he was uh, president from 1845 to 49, was physically undistinguishable. The president would walk in, and nobody did anything. They couldn't figure out who in the world this fellow was. He was physically undistinguishable. Well, the wife had had enough. So she decided to pen the tune. Her name was Sarah. Hail to the chief. Brought it to the folks and said, whenever my husband walks in, I want you to play hail to the chief. And that is what, that's the tradition of where that started. And now that even happens when the president walks in to a formal occasion. But today we focus our thoughts on Jesus, the bread of life. Hail to the chief, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who gives us that which we need, that we will never grow hungry and we will never be thirsty. Amen. We continue our service with our next hymn.
together with people throughout the world, we witness to our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us together proclaim the faith we share with others around the world. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And in our prayers, we will be remembering Wendy and the grieving families of Lynn, Deb, and uh, the mother of David. Thank you. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. A brief silence. O oh, wise one, your wisdom has been present in this world since its beginning. Pour out your wisdom into the hearts of the whole world, especially the newly baptized, lay leaders, deacons, pastors, and bishops. Merciful God. Holy God of all creation, you are the source of all life. Where the sun blazes hard and strong, bring a gentle breeze. In the places experiencing the cold of winter, bring your warmth. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Compassionate God, help government leaders of this world unite for peace and justice. Humble all who hold authority that power is directed toward a more just society. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Bread of life from heaven, you feed us. Fill all who hunger with need, needed nutrition and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. May we see a day when all are fed. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. O wisdom of truth, help us to understand your, your will for the church. Be with congregations experiencing transition, redevelopment, and the exciting new frightening path of newness. May your wisdom be found at every step. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Redeeming God, we give you thanks for the lives and witness of your saints now departed, especially the grieving family and friends of Lynn Skelly, Deb Sudoka, Sinmoka, um, Rose Meyer, who is the sister of Mary Dvorak, Dawood Schultz on the loss of his mother, Lori Erdi Bonzak and for healing for Wendy Kep. Bring your beloved into eternal glory, opening wide the gates to the heavenly banquet. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please take a few minutes to greet one another. we receive our tithes, gifts, and offerings.
invite you to stand as you are able. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness, to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, and we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. I invite you to be seated. Today we'll be gathering for communion, and we'll be standing here uh, in the front of the sanctuary. We will commune the... Um, pulpit side first, and then we will commune the lectern side. Come for the table of the Lord is now ready.
for you. invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own love, with, with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. We join in singing our closing hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine, hymn number 671. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.